What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Dodge Tuning Basics over on the channel Drop Top Performance. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below what you guys might want to see in future videos as far as tuning, uh, you know, MDS deletes type stuff, um, fuel trims, anything to do with tuning, go down in the comments below so I kind of have a, a general idea of what y'all, the audience, wants to see because I can only brainstorm so much stuff. Um, so what y'all can let me know, I can go do some research, try it out on my car, and then we can talk about it at a later date. So let's go ahead and start talking about what we're going to be discussing today. And that is going to be one of the most important tools in your arsenal as a tuner. And that's the actual VCM scanner. Now last video we went over the editor portion, which is actually how you um, input your tune, input, input your changes into the ECU and make the vehicle run the way that you want as you know the tuner. So I'm gonna put the little link up in the up in the corner for that last video if you haven't already seen it, this is your first time. So this scanner is exactly what it is. So or exactly what it sounds like. It's it's a scanner. So using this tool you're able to um, see what your vehicle is already doing. So if you haven't tuned the vehicle yet and, and you just have the stock file and, and you're curious to see how much timing is it running at this much, you know, cylinder air mass or um, cylinder air charge, depending on the model. It's it's changed for GM and, and Dodge. So if you're curious to see what it reads at for this air amount of air charge at this RPM, you can go in and look at it. And I'm going to show you how to, um, you know, read a scanner and kind of understand. And it's a really, really good tool. You really can't tune without it because without knowing what your car is doing, you can't make an appropriate change. So if you decide to give it 26 degrees of timing up top and it doesn't like it at all without the scanner, you can't really, you don't know that it's sparking or spark knocking. You do, you know, you'll, you'll feel it for sure. You'll definitely feel it and then you, you'll get little puffs of black smoke. But in order to actually visually see it and see exactly where it's happening in the cells, on your graph then you, you can't do it and luckily we have little things called histograms which I'll show you here in a second so we're gonna do a disclaimer real quick um, because it just saves my butt and lets you know that hey I am not a professional so let's get that thing going and then we will get the computer up and running so that we can get started disclaimer time I am NOT a professional tuner please take everything with a grain of salt now let's learn together and grow as a community. All right guys, so as you can see, I'm gonna go down into the corner so we can go ahead and start viewing what we will be looking at here on the VCM scanner. Now this is, might look a little different than yours because this is set up for my specific way of tuning, which you know, it's saved up here. You got a save layout form. So what I'm going to upload is right now is I'm going to upload a file from a 2500 Dodge Ram, um, stock Ram, excuse me. It's a 6.4 liter and you guys should be able to see it right now. So this is about what you're going to see. Um, knock that out of the way. Over on your left is going to be all your channels. So your channels are going to be things such as uh, engine RPM, vehicle speed, intake air temp, air charge, so on and so forth. You can add as many as you want. So if you wanted to come in here and add some, you'd have to add channel. But right now, this is a saved file. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys the basics and, and we'll, we'll go on um, here later and possibly today, maybe in a later date, depending on how long this video winds up being because I don't really want to make a 30 minute video again. Uh, mainly because I, I don't feel like I can keep you guys intrigued that long. So over here is your graphs. These are, these are your called histograms. What it is, is it's capturing um, what's happening and then it's gathering it all together and creating a history log essentially. So for instance, this is your spark advance right here. You've got different options, long-term fuel trims, short-term fuel trims, O2, uh, artificial neural network, artificial neural network at watt, uh, speed density, 
you know, be all, all the goodies, right? And then down here you have your charts versus time. So what this is, is this is showing what's happening in the exact time that it's happening. And then down here you have a bar and you see how as time goes on and you're doing your engine run, everything's moving, right? So that's the histogram is collecting data up here and putting it in the cells in which it's making that a change or adjustment or a correction in the tune file itself. So the histogram works really, really, really well um, with like spark retard. So as you can see right here, um, Dodge is a little weird. So I guess it's weird, but it's not weird. It's just different from GM. So you notice how it's, it's a knock retard, which is what this is, is negative 1.5. So on GM vehicles, it actually goes positive, saying that, hey, there's 1.5 degrees of knock. Well, Dodge does it a little different. Dodge does it in the negative, uh, does it by using negative numbers. I'm guessing that's, it kind of makes more sense that way because they're pulling 1.5 degrees of time in order to um, stop the detonation because the knock sensors are picking up some type of detonation. Now, your chart versus time is very important. Um, it's kinda, you can add anything that you got on here. So you got RPM, speed density, injector pulse width, throttle position sensor, all that goody stuff down here. But these channels, that's where the channels come into play because in order to read on either the chart versus time or the histograms, you have to have it in the channels. Um, because it's picking up from the vehicle, uh, what what the scanner can pick up from the vehicle, and then it's processing it, and then putting it into your histogram and or um, chart versus time. You also have your gauges. I don't use them. They're cool. They look nice. You can like do whatever, make them orange, red. You know, customize them. I guess. Uh, I don't use them. I don't really get anything out of them as far as. Um, data goes from a tuning aspect, they are just not helpful to me. So I like to stick to my chart versus time and graph. Uh, so let's look at uh, playing this run through, okay? So it looks like right here we're doing a pull. Uh, looks maybe second through, or first through third? Yeah, first through third. So let's play it out at normal speed, a way you can kind of see how the histogram works in comparison to the chart versus time. So you can see it, the time negative timing is, or the timing table is going through the cells and you got negative one degree, negative one degree, and then once we start coming off the throttle, it swoops back around and then goes back into idle or you know low uh, KPA, uh, manifold absolute pressures which is just kind of you know at, at 1200 rpm or 1000 rpm so it's probably just above idle probably cruising uh throttle position sensor is at 14.1 percent open at a speed of 48 miles per hour so you're you're coasting at this point um your map is your manifold absolute pressure which is how much work the engine is doing how much air is getting pushed into the cylinder um, your O2s, you know, me mega volts or mini volts, I don't remember. Intake air temp, that's obviously very important. You can tell as you come onto the throttle and start, uh, it starts coming down. So it's, it's at 95 degrees. And then once you come off the throttle, it goes back up. You know, that's just the air's getting sucked into the engine and then it's cooling off your intake air temp and then you know say if you do a hard run and you just let it sit and idle the ambient air temps are going to create a higher intake air temp which is going to in in turn pull timing taking away power this is why the intake air temp is so important now for me i know my car the intake air temp is really hot um, so for this you would have to adjust it because it looks like the peak uh, temperature on this graph is probably about a hundred so anything over a hundred intake air temp he's not going to be able to read it let's see if we can get it above uh, 
No, it, it kind of stays at 95, which is pretty good, honestly. I'm not sure what the ambient air temp was around this time outside of the vehicle. Now, um, spark is very important, obviously. This You can read your spark. Um, you got your air mass, which I'm not really sure what he's reading on. I'm guessing uh, it's the map. But instead of it being in KPA, it's in grams, possibly. I'm not sure. Then you have your um, Bank 1 short-term fuel trims. And then your Bank 2 O2 short-term. Long-term long -term fuel trims, short-term fuel trims, long-term short trims. You know, these coincide with these. These are reading, you know. And, and they're making constant corrections. You see how they're swooping up and down, you know, making constant changes in the air-fuel ratio. Um, but this is a super awesome tool, guys. I mean, let's see if we can't pull out another blog file of a supercharged. Uh, so I'll show you one where a supercharged charger is, I think this is a 5.7. It is going lean at wide open throttle. Now, let's see. I don't think that I have a wide band hooked up to this one. Um, so it's not, it's not showing <clears throat> where it's going lean yet. Oh, I guess here. So right here. So your short term fuel trims, it's making 23%. It's adding 23% fuel. So it's correcting itself, keeping it from, you know, detonating essentially, which it is already. You see 4.7 degrees of spark retard, which is quite a bit. It's a little spicy. And it's having to add at some points 20, 30, 30% of fuel. So you can see that it is going lean, which is no bueno. Um, again, this is a super good tool in order to combat these issues that you might be having in regards to, um, you know, an issue with the vehicle such as spark retard. You know that you are getting at these cells. At this is in the boost. Anything over a hundred um, percent of you know manifold air pressure or cylinder air mass just depending on the the model that you're you're tuning is into boost because there is more you know there's more air going into the manifold air pressure than you know 100 which is like I, I forget the terms and like I said I'm not a professional guys I'm learning with you guys and and trying to uh, figure this out all myself luckily we have things like the tuning school and uh, Goat Rope Garage, which is a really good guy. Uh, I like watching his stuff. And, uh, you know, like I said in the last video, Greg Banish. Um, going on to Spark. This is super important. Uh, being able to copy and paste this, paste it into the tune file, which I'll show you guys how to do at a later date on how to correct Spark. Um, spark detonation and prevent it from happening because that, that is obviously very important. Um, artificial neural network changes, artificial watt changes, which is definitely needs to be changed. Um, with a vehicle that's boosted, cammed, or anything where you're changing, you have to get away from the artificial neural network and go to speed density or VE tuning. It's just, it's going to run better. It's going to run smoother. Artificial neural network is very good at running. This is a stock 5.7 liter from the factory, factory tune. This is what it knows to do. It knows to do it better than anyone else. Now you start putting different variables, exhaust, cam, heads, headers, boost. You're going to have to change the speed density. It's just the name of the game. And it can kind of be difficult, which is what I'm waiting to do on the charger that I own now. Um, now that I have access to a dyno, it should be pretty easy. Guys, this is... This is just a quick look at the VCM editor, or excuse me, VCM scanner um, tool because it's very important and without it, you really can't too. 
uh, because you don't know what changes are being made and if they are correct or not. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this down and bring the big screen back up so we can talk a little bit. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Um, if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Comment down below. Remember, what do you want to learn? What do you want to go over? Um, I kind of ramble on a little bit in this video um, because there is... I'm trying to stress the importance of the scanner. Without the scanner, you really can't do your job as a tuner. You just can't make the changes because you don't know what changes are being made um, and if they're working correctly. So I just want to say thanks for watching. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video if you want to pass on the knowledge. I'm trying to grow this community as big and as fast as possible so everybody can learn and not be so afraid to touch their vehicle because that's just the... That's what this channel is about. I want people to understand that you don't have to be um, a master mechanic. You don't have to have all these schools. You just have to be willing to take the plunge and pick up that tool and make the changes and learn. Sometimes you'll make mistakes, but sometimes you're going to do great things and you're going to feel so good to, about yourself because you did it on your set, by yourself on your own time, on your own dime which is uh, where I'll leave you at, guys. Thanks for watching. Check you next time.